Anglican Bishop lay more emphasis on why the world needs to embrace Christ. Anglican priest faults federal government inability to build the health sector to world standard. And on the international scene, Archbishop Mbanda assures Christians of a living hope. Hello and welcome to the news on as brought to you from the Advent Cable Network Nigeria Television, ACNN TV. I am Rachel Ibuni. Christ has been said to be the only solution to the world, most especially in times like this, when it is experiencing an attack by the deadly coronavirus. This was the assertion of the Dalcesian Anglican Bishop of the Diocese of Kubwa, the Right Reverend Dr. Duke Akamisoko, in his message to Christians all over the world. According to the cleric, hope in Christ brings peace, joy, love and tranquility. Hence, the need for the world to embrace him. At this particular point in time in our nation, where there is gloomness, hopelessness, with the COVID-19, with death all around us, the Easter message is very apt and very important. Because in Easter, Christ defeated death. Christ rose again from the dead to show to us his power over death. And that will bring to our nation at this particular point in time that there is hope. Hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I challenge all of us to have hope, to believe that there is hope, hope beyond this life. Hope in Christ will give us joy, peace, love, and tranquility. And especially as all over the country now, people are in pain, in agony, not only in Nigeria, all over the world. With COVID-19, with death records every day, with sickness records every day, we can have solution in Christ. Solution can be found in believing in Christ, trusting in Him, believing in Him, and taking His words. Jesus Christ is risen. He's risen in me, and He can rise in our life. We believe all the situations in our life, in our nation, in our economy, in our business, they can rise up again. It will have hope in Christ. And still in the spirit of celebrating Easter, the Diocesan and Missioner, Lagos Diocese Anglican Communion, Right Reverend Dr. Humphrey Olumakai, has urged Christians to be united in prayer, as well as seek God whom he said is the only one that can heal the world in times of trials and tribulations. Olumakai gave this charge in a sermon he delivered at the 2020 Easter service of the Diocese of Lagos Anglican Communion in Lagos. While enumerating the significance of the season, the bishop reminded Christians that Easter is a time that the world celebrates the triumph of good over evil. The cleric assured that even in the midst of fear of death and hunger, among other things caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, that like Christ appeared to the apostles, the reason Lord will come to the world's aid. As the condition of coronavirus issue bites harder on Nigerians, some Anglican bishops have taken to their knees to call on God on behalf of Nigeria and the church. They prayed for healing of the land, demonstrated true blessing of anointing oil. In videos made available to ACNN TV, the Bishop of Ijesha North Diocese, Right Reverend Isaac Oluyomo, together with few of the congregation, prayed on oil for the victory of Christ to prevail. Heavenly Father, you anoint your Son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and power to bring to man the blessings of your kingdom. Anoint your church with the same Holy Spirit that we who share in his suffering and his victory may bear witness to the gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord this almighty oil for signs and wonders. Amen. Pray this virus in your world, cover Nigeria as Christians and other people that are seeing the blood of Jesus, and are the healing and deliverance. Any government or any power that will oppress us, the Lord will seize power for them. Let the blood of Jesus bless everybody that is sick. 
In another video, it is the Anglican Bishop of Amici Diocese in Anambra State, Right Reverend Ephraim Ikako, with few of his priests praying on oil for every yoke to be broken and for the people of Nigeria to be set free. Heavenly Father, giver of life and salvation, sanctify this oil for the healing of the sick and wholeness of life. Grant that those who in faith and repentance receive this ministry may by the power of the Holy Spirit be made whole. By this anointing oil, O oh Lord, let every yoke of bondage of body, soul, and spirit be broken. For your blessing and favor on your people. And due to the extended stay at home order in Delta State by two weeks, beginning from April the 15th, and in order not to go to sleep and give room for the enemy to sow weeds among the wheat, the Diocese of Worry, through its Diocesan Bishop, the Right Reverend Christian Ide, has drawn a roster to motivate the Diocesan faithful to continue to pray as a diocese throughout the two weeks lockdown. The prayer time is slated to be from 12 noon to 6 p.m. daily, excluding Sundays for family Sunday worship. Archdeacons, vicars, chaplains of chapels are advised to organize their members in their various homes to observe the prayer time assigned to them. The Vice Chancellor Ajayi Crowder University, Right Reverend Professor Dako Asaju, has spoken extensively on the tradition of the Anglican Church. In an interview exclusive to ACNN TV, he confirmed that the Anglican Church earned its tradition from the original setting of the temple as revealed to Moses by God. He also said that the church has some other traditions from the Catholic Church. He said the church members bow in front of the altar only as a reverence to God. We have inherited traditions. First, Judaism. Old Testament informed the New Testament the New Testament gave back to the church. Jesus Christ, our Lord himself, was always in the temple and in the synagogue. So we have traditions we have to keep to. The very structure of the church is Old Testament temple structure. In the temple, which was fashioned after the tabernacle as God revealed it to Moses, you have the Holy of Holies where the Ark of Covenant dwells. That Holy of Holies is now the chancel where the clergy only can enter. That table that you have there in any Anglican church where we do Holy Communion, Holy Communion is called Mass in the Roman Catholic theology. It's actually a sacrifice. Every sacrifice of self and Holy Communion is a sacrifice where we offer up the body and we offer up the blood of Christ. So we have that tradition. After the Holy of Holies, we have the Holy Place. Then you have the table of showbread, you have the candelabra, you have the table of incense and all that. That is the place where the ministers function. That is the holy place. Also, when asked about infant baptism, he has this to say. One, God said to Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. When you were still in the womb of your mother, I had already ordained you. So if God had already ordained a prophet from the womb, then as far as God is concerned, the call and ordination are taking place. So the baby in the womb is part of the community. Second story. When Jesus Christ's mother came to salute Zachariah and Elizabeth, the baby, John the Baptist, in the womb of Elizabeth, did what? Left for joy. How did the baby hear the voice and recognize this? The voice of the Messiah I've come to work for. In other words, the church has this position. The baby in the womb is a part of the church. Once a child is born, it's part of the economy. The circumcision of the father must be extended to the children. Children can be cursed or blessed up to the fourth generation. So if a child is a part of the community, if a child has been brought into the world with destiny, with covenant attached to that child, you must be able to take steps that will protect that child. Everybody who is to be in the community of Christ must be baptized. What do you do with the children? And still to come, Anglican women donate sanitary items and others to frontline workers. These and many more after the break. Please stay tuned.
Tali by the power of the Almighty Amen. God, we render it none and void in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know what that situation is. Maybe you have been threatened in your marriage. Mm. Receive your healing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Watch out for prayer hour 12 noon every Friday. You're welcome back and thanks for staying tuned. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv. And to be up to date with our news and other programs, download the VM Africa app for Android from Google Play Store. Some Anglican priests have condemned the statement credited to the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, over the state of the Nigerian health sector and also hit hard on federal government for not providing quality health care for the populace. According to these priests, Venerable Nwaya and Reverend Canon Bola Oguyon, it is quite unfortunate that the federal government has not been able to build the health sector to world standard. The priest made this known in an ACNN weekly program titled Christians in Politics with the topic The Church and the Field Politicians. To federal government of this country. Yes. Comes out to say that until he was appointed as chairman of this uh, presidential task force, presidential, uh, task force mm -hmm. on COVID 19, he never knew the state of uh, health facilities. So, which country area. was he living in? Because they have never paid attention to exactly. le true leadership. You know, there was a program we ran here. When I said one of the best legacy Buhari government can leave behind for this country is a superb health system. Mm -hmm. Because the leader of this very government was very, very sickly when he took over power. Mm -hmm. And he was being taken all around the world. And so I expected that as he was going around, he would know that Kai, there's need to to pay attention to, to our medical sector, mm -hmm. sector yes. and to our health sector and make sure that good hospitals are revived, equipment are brought in, especially testing equipment to mm -hmm. know what kind of ailment or whatever it is. So if not because of COVID-19 now, we don't know that our hospital need ventilators. The Business and Professional Women's Fellowship of Women's Organization, Diocese of Lagos Anglican Communion, has donated cleaning and sanitary, as well as personal hygiene materials, to frontline workers in Lagos State as their assistance to the government in its efforts to contain the spread of coronavirus disease in the state. The association, led by the president, women and girls' organizations, and wife of the Bishop Lagos Anglican Diocese, Professor Mrs. Mutirayo Lumakai, presented these items to the First Lady of Lagos State, Dr. Mrs. Ibijoke. Sanwolu at the Lagos State Government House, Marina, Lagos. Speaking on the occasion, Professor Lumakai said that the occasion deemed it necessary to join hands with the government in the efforts to stop the spread of the coronavirus disease in the state, while also assuring the government of the association's prayers for the state. Professor Olumakai prayed for divine intervention and healing in the state and the nation as a whole. Responding to the gesture, Dr. Ibijoke Songwoluk commended Professor Lumakai and her group for extending hands of fellowship and kindness in the bid to contain, as well as read the state of the deadly disease that is ravaging the world presently. She further commended the bishop's wife, as well as the diocese of Lagos Anglican Communion, for the previous donations in cash and kind, which they made to alleviate the hardship that citizens are facing since the lockdown due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic in the world, and also urged the church to keep praying for the state, the nation, as well as the world, for God's intervention and end to coronavirus disease in the world. And now to the international scene. The primate of the Anglican Church of Rwanda, His Grace the Most Reverend Dr. Laurent Mbanda, has assured Christians of a living hope, which, according to him, was brought to all through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He made this known in an Easter message to Christians. Resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior, gives us a living hope. 
we can ask ourselves questions. And one of the questions that we can ask ourselves is, what does this hope mean? Hope is a feeling of expectation, a desire for a particular thing to happen, an African proverb says. However long the night, the dawn will break. That is another way of saying there is hope for tomorrow and there is hope tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Right Reverend Nathan Amorti, the Anglican Bishop of Siangugu Diocese in Rwanda, advised everyone to make this time of lockdown useful and make improvements. I mean, in fact, we want to take this opportunity to, rem to remind our people, our pastors scattered in different parishes and places, make this time, make use of this time. This time when we are staying at home, make sure that you make very good use of it. Let it be a time of fellowship, but let it be a time that you can use to see if what you are responsible for is doing well. It's a time that we can remember to do our kitchen garden when we are at home. It's a time that you can look around at your house and see how it is doing. It's a time that we can improve on a homestead wherever we gain our income from. And we want to remind you that we've been praying for you. The government of conservative President Sebastian Pinera has said that about 1,300 prisoners at high risk of contracting coronavirus will be pardoned in Chile after the Constitutional Court approved a special. The law will benefit prisoners over 75 years old, mothers of children under two years old, and pregnant women who will be able to serve the rest of their sentences at home. Prisoners convicted of crimes against humanity and those guilty of homicide, kidnapping, drug trafficking, and domestic violence are excluded. The pardon is intended to ease pressure on the prisons, which, according to a Supreme Court report, are a time bomb, with some 42,000 inmates. Among them are nearly 100 people convicted of human rights violations during Chile's military dictatorship from 1973 to 1990. And that's it on the news and the hour. Thanks for watching. I am Rachel Ibumi. Remember to stay safe at home.